Hey everybody, today on the Inscale Engineer, I'd like to show some work I've been doing on connecting some little round LCDs. Uh, these are 1.28 inches in diameter and they make the perfect little gauges to uh, control trains through command station. So right now I've got five of these all connected to the same loco just as a kind of a stress test, but uh, these make perfect little gauges to be spread around your layout. So today I'll go through the process of how I was able to make that all happen. I've got a buddy that was doing a project with these little round displays that I ended up helping him with. So uh, that's how I kind of discovered them. They're uh, 1.28 inches in diameter and uh, from a company called Waveshare. And you can get these on Amazon. Uh, you can find them for as low as uh, five and a half bucks. So for under $6, uh, that's when you get them in groups of three. Uh, you can you can get these things. So uh, I ended up with just just tons of these things, uh, but uh, you know they make perfect uh, gauges for co controlling trains as well. So uh, that just had to be done. You can find lots of varieties of these on on Amazon. You know, w WaveShare is the company that makes the LCD itself, but then. Uh, the circuit board in the back uh, and the mounting you can get from lots of different companies. So, uh, you know, this one, you know, with this big header isn't the best. So uh, WaveShare themselves makes one that, uh, you know, it's got some mounting feet on the back. You know, you can get the, the cable so that it's it's not in the way as much so you can you know, physically make a smaller diameter gauge. Uh, they even, WaveShare even makes one that uh, has all the electronics included on the back. So it's got the ESP32 S3. It's got a uh, six axis uh, accelerometer gyro combo chip on here. It's got uh, uh, ability to charge a lithium ion cell. Uh, you know, USB-C connector, uh, it's got a, some extra I.O., but, oh, and touch screen, but, you know, this thing is, I think, $30, so, you know, six times more expensive than the plain Jane ones, so a uh, little prohibitive, but still cool. So, to drive these displays, uh, I've been using these little ESP32 S3 modules, again from WaveShare. I don't have any affiliation with WaveShare, but uh, you, know, you kind of fall into these guys. So uh, this little module is a 32, ESP32 S3, which is a dual core processor running at 240 megahertz. It's got a little tiny chip antenna on here there's some serious Harry Potter stuff going on inside that thing. Uh, I think it's it's actually got better performance than this classic little uh, circuit board antenna that you find on a lot of these modules. So, uh, you know, this thing about the size of a little larger than your thumbnail, just incredible. And these are $9 on Amazon when you buy them in groups of three. So, uh, couple these two together and you have a, a pretty powerful system so uh, that's what's driving each one of these so for under $16 oh and then there's the encoder knob and button I looked up you can get these encoders for a dollar on uh, Amazon as well although I think I'm going to change these out these are the you know from Amazon the super cheap ones and, and they work okay. Uh, sometimes the uh, the detent doesn't fall right where it's switching. So you get, you know, sometimes it'll change by two counts, sometimes by one. So I think if I bought the better ones from DigiKey or Mauser, uh, the original company was Burns, I think, that developed these things. So, but they're like three and a half bucks. <laughs> Yeah, pinching pennies on something so stupid, right? So we'll just buy the better ones from uh, DigiKey. So if you look on the back side of this thing, you can see the little 
ESP module back here. It's got a little uh, RGB status light. Uh, uh, one of these uh, programmable guys, you know, the WS, I don't know what. Uh, so it can change color. So each time it sends sends a message, I think it blinks blue. And every time it receives, it's aqua or vice versa. I forget exactly how I programmed those up. So, and then in the idle state, it just goes back to, to green. And this is the lowest intensity out of these things too. It's crazy how bright they can be. So if there's an air, any air, I turn this on red uh, for like a half a second at full power and it really gets your attention. So yeah, kind of crazy. So the first big question is how to connect a bunch of wireless devices to command station. Uh, you know, certainly there's the Wi-Fi server that uh, is on the command station that allows you to connect your phone to control trains, but uh, I'm not sure that would allow you to connect many more devices. And if you did, would that affect the performance of uh, your phone, you know, the existing devices you connect through that? So uh, I'm pretty sure that it's not going to support a lot more devices. You, know, you couldn't connect 20 different things and have them all work through that single port. Uh, so luckily, Command Station has a, an extra serial port, serial port 3. I think there's actually more than one, but serial port 3 is the one I'm using. Uh, so there's a config file. It's just simply called config.h. And that's where you have your uh, Wi-Fi settings uh, defined, the SSID and password and all that jazz are in that same config file. And down below, you'll find some commented out lines. One of them will be uh, pound define serial three underscore commands. And just take the two forward slashes out of the beginning of that line. So it's now an executable line. Save it, recompile, redownload the command station, and now You'll have an extra command port on serial three that will work in parallel to the other ports that you already are using. So uh, that is a pretty easy solution. So here's my little test setup. You now I've got an extra uh, command station here just for testing purposes. And here's one of those little ESP32 modules. So uh, this is uh, just got two wires connected over to serial three. So yeah, you can see down here, serial three, RXTX3. Uh, just come over here to a pair of pins on the ESP32. And then we're stealing a, some five volts from uh, the module. And then this was my first uh, generation LCD. So, uh, just a couple of 3D printed parts here, uh, holding all this stuff together. So uh, originally I was using these larger ESP32s uh, before I discovered the much smaller ones. So uh, it's not too bad in terms of the amount of wiring it takes. So, uh, you know, you can wire this together in 10, 15 minutes. So not too bad. Okay, great. So now we've got uh, command station figured out. We've got a little module that's going to act like a gateway to it. Uh, so now the big question is, the elephant in the room, how are we going to connect potentially dozens of different devices through this port uh, without getting choked up itself? Uh, Wi-Fi just doesn't seem like it's going to work. If it does work, it's, you know, I actually tried it, you know, and, and you know, I got a few device. I think I got all five of them connected, but they were sluggish, right? And there's herky jerky skips, and you know, it's just how Wi Fi is, right? I mean, it's doing all this back and forth and all the encryption, and oh my god, it just goes on and on and on. So it didn't seem like that was going to work out in the long run. So, you know, there's got to be something else. How about Bluetooth? Uh, so I went down the rabbit hole of Bluetooth. I spent days looking at Bluetooth. Uh, you know, I used Bluetooth in the past, but uh, there's all kinds of new Bluetooth. The Bluetooth BLE, low energy, uh, 
then there was uh, on top of that, you can even add uh, meshing. So you can have a mesh network. So each node helps it, right? So the more nodes you have, theoretically, uh, the system works better. But the complexity just explodes when you start doing that stuff. It's like, you know, I'm not going to spend months doing this. It's unbelievable. So, you know, back to Wi-Fi. And then Wi-Fi uh, has meshing as well, turns out. So theoretically, the more nodes again, the, the better it's going to perform. But again, the complexity just explodes. So there's got to be a better way. There's got to be something. Uh, it's just point to point. And then finally discover, turns out, the company that makes these chips, Expressive, has a library called ESP Now. And it basically just strips Wi-Fi to the bare bones. It just dumps all the software layer stacks. It's, it's just basically just using the Wi-Fi radio. No software on top of it. It does support encryption if you want to add that and passwords. But uh, basically, it just turns on the Wi-Fi radio and it just starts sending messages back and forth. It's designed to be a point-to-point -point, uh, messaging system. So... Uh, ideally, it would use the MAC address, so you would pair devices and you could send from one node to another node or another node to a group of nodes, but you have to know the MAC address of all the nodes ahead of time so you can embed it in the software. So that kind of seemed like a bummer, but turns out you can send broadcast messages. Just blast it out there, just send a message, and anybody that wants to receive it have at it, right? So there's no overhead. There, it's scalable. You can have the gateway when it gets a, a new message from command station, it just sends it. And there could be a thousand nodes out there that all receive it simultaneous. So, and then, you know, the, the one that actually it was targeted for could respond back and all the rest of them just ignore it. Perfect. So that's what I ended up using. So uh, next I'll show you a slide. Hopefully this slide makes sense and can help explain things. Uh, so, you know, we've got the Arduino Mega at the top, you know, running, you know, uh, at the command station. And we're using the uh, DCC EX protocol over the serial port. And it goes to the little gateway. And the gateway does no processing on it. It just takes the message and sends it out on ESP now to all the throttles that want to receive it or do whatever they want with it, right? And then they can respond back, and that just goes to the gateway, which, again, does no processing on the message at all. It just sends it back over the serial port to a uh, command station. So that's it. Uh, you can have as many nodes down here as you want. Uh, they could be throttles. They could even be something else. It, 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 you know, the sky's the limit. So, uh, again, yeah, I could go drone on forever about all the details and, and the trials and tribulations of getting this all to work, which there were many. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. So I could continue just drone on and on and, and talk more about all the nitty-gritty details of all the software involved and uh, certainly willing to do that if anybody's interested so that's kind of what I'm looking for some comments and feedback if people are interested I could put this stuff up on github and see if anybody else wants to uh, also build on top of it so comment and subscribe down below to let me know thanks